Hello and welcome to week seven assignments. So here we go. Uh, ISA six this week. I'm going to go over that probably because it's the most um, uh, needing of specific criteria to show you exactly what to do. But ultimately, there's two main things. You're going to perform a version comparison between Philippians 1, 3 to 11 and Colossians 1, 3 to 8. And through a review of the commentaries of Craddock, Fee, and O'Brien. These are available in the Lesson 7 resource folder. To demonstrate interaction with these three commentaries, you need to provide correctly formatted in-text citations and bibliographic data for each of them. In other words, you need to, when you're doing your work, when you use them, um, and you do need to use them for your assignment this week, you need to cite them. And at the end, you need a, a bibliography. That's all it's saying. So it, meaning that this week, to do this, this assignment, Epistles Analysis, excuse me, you need to read Craddock, Fee, and O'Brien. These are available in the Lesson 7 resource folder. And then you need to actually use them. You need to interact with each of them and to show that by citing so in your work. And then, uh, obviously, uh, include a bibliography of, of their, of their um, work at the end of your epistles analysis. Secondly, you need to perform a discourse analysis of Philippians 1, 3 to 11. Okay, so to do that, you need to go, um, you need the epistles analysis worksheet. And that is in the Lesson 7 resource folder. So if you open the Lesson 7 resource folder, you'll come to this page, and it looks like a lot of documents at first, but it's not really all that bad. You'll see here your typical you know, orientation to Lesson 7 and your audio lecture. These are very short. You can just hit the script and read them in two minutes. And then your, um, that Craddock, Fee, and O'Brien reading, you just click on those and the PDFs are right there. So you can either open them or download them or both um, and, and, and read them for this week. And then you've got a Lecture 14 resource comparing, um, essentially, You've got other things that are helpful. A discourse analysis example will be very helpful um, to show you how to do discourse analysis. You have a discourse analysis chart there as well. And then the uh, hermeneutics assignment guide. Uh, I actually think we keep that twice. We give it to you twice, assignment guide there and up there. Then you've got the lecture 15, and then you finally get to the Pistols Analysis Worksheet for ISA number set six. The Craddock Reading on Philippians PDF for ISA number six is right here. So a lot of things um, to, to, to read and go through, but a lot of helpful things. Now, um, for that um, Epistles Analysis um, Worksheet, you'd open that. I'm going to open it for you right now so you can see it. That's what it looks like. So not too intimidating in terms of what the worksheet looks like, but this is a relatively large assignment. So you need to start it right away. Uh, well, do the reading right away and then get going on it. Um, the first thing you need to do is to do uh, compare the passage in three versions, the NASB, ESV, and NIV, and then note any differences. Okay, um, so, so that's, that's the version comparison. Then you need to compare the prayer in Philippians 1, 3 to 11, because that's what this assignment is, with that of Colossians 1, 3 to 8. So all of a sudden we have another passage that we're having you bring into the mix to compare it to. Discuss in no more than two paragraphs what differences exist and why they may not be significant. So with that, um, you could do that kind of off the top of your head, just looking at the two and get some of the stuff. But you have an assignment guide that you need to use for that. So you would click on that assignment guide and um, it's right here and you'll see um, the version comparison right there is in the assignment guide so you would go down to to uh, version comparison and follow these steps when doing the version comparison uh, follow those details um, the the second thing um, you don't, so again, you're not necessarily going through all these steps in the assignment guide, but you're using them as you need to. In this case, we're asking you to do this week the version comparison. That's the first piece um, that we're having you do. Uh, sorry, I'm flipping everything around, but I'm just trying to tie it all together. The version comparison, that's number one. So you can find that just like I showed you in the assignment guide. Then um, the, the comparison 
Um, that that is. Let's see if that does that have a step. I'm actually trying to remember if there's actually a step that we're gonna do. Maybe connection analysis um, or just compare um, passages. So you know the connection analysis is is not the same thing. Um, if I go down to page five here, um, let's see where did I skip that? Page five, hello. Page four, page five. Um, oh, that's a discourse analysis. So um, version comparison, yeah, that's the version comparison there. So really, on when you're doing this step on um, uh, the number two for this week in the epistles analysis, um, comparing Pauline introductions. Try to think through. Sorry, I'm kind of thinking out loud here. Try, try to think through, you're really, I don't think we have necessarily a step for this, but I do want you to look at, uh, you know, the passage we're looking at, Philippians 1, 3 to 11, and then compare it to Colossians 1, 3 to 8. You know, we did this for the Gospels piece, you're comparing what's in Luke versus what's in um, Matthew, for instance. Here we're going to compare what are the differences and nuances based on your study. So use the different things that you're studying of Philippians and then compare it to Colossians. But you, it, this is more, this is more um, in a, uh, you know, a reflection format. It's not a bulleted list. I want you to write out two paragraphs. Um, no more than two paragraphs, though. The differences that the two exist and what of those differences might be significant significant in their differences. Then you do a discourse analysis on just Philippians, not on Colossians, just Philippians. Okay, so the discourse analysis is, uh, well, you can see examples here, but um, we even have um, in the assignment guide, uh, discourse, well, a discourse analysis guide. So don't worry about what's in the assignment guide, that can actually get confusing. So you can use that as a reference. There's, we have discourse analysis. I think I showed that to you a minute ago. There is discourse analysis here, step four, for you even have an example in the epistles. So you can use this, an example analysis, step four in the epistles right there. Um, but then we also even give you, um, uh, is this the example? There, here we go. The discourse analysis. Maybe it's the same thing. Yeah, okay. So I think we, why I'm getting confused is, let me open this one again. I opened some things in advance to try not to confuse you, but I think it is still a little bit confusing when we try to do too many things. Here's the example of Romans 15, 22 to 26. This is an example of what a discourse analysis is to look like, okay? So that, that is helpful for you. Um, and then this is a page of just a discourse analysis guide, the discourse analysis guide. So this is definitely what you want to, to be looking at to do your assignment, okay? Um, so this is how to do that third part when it says discourse analysis. Use that one. And uh, there it is. Okay, that's why I was confused. I'm looking up here. So the discourse analysis guide, click on that. There is a discourse analysis, obviously the example and chart, and in the assignment guide, we have a, you know, a step on discourse analysis. But for this week, we want you to specifically use this discourse analysis guide. So click on this to answer um, question number three, complete discourse analysis on Philippians 1, 3 to 11, okay? I think that makes sense. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's just a lot of things to go, a lot of different you know, clicks and um, things you have to download. Um, I just want to make sure everyone knows which ones are for what. Finally then, provide a preliminary statement of the message of Philippians 1, 3 to 11. No more than a paragraph. So taking into effect everything you've learned um, so far this uh, semester, um, give me a message. What is it you want to find the core idea and speak around what Philippians um, 1, 3 to 11 is uh, saying here. So that is it, guys. That is the epistles analysis worksheet. Um, but that is only part of this week. Um, 
the other part of this week is the Greek word study. So, um, in the Greek word study, you're going to study the word translated conflict in Philippians 1.30. So, same chapter, but later in the chapter. According to the word study process laid out in the assignment guide, a Greek study worksheet's been provided. So, um, when you get into the Lesson 7 resource folder, you'll see down here, you're going to open this, the Greek word study worksheet. It will download here. Let's see, that opens now. Yes. Here's the Greek word study worksheet. It gives you um, the steps right there. So that's, that's the steps for word study. You're simply just following them. If you have questions, um, let me know. But, but uh, you're doing, this is basically the same thing um, that, that, uh, that you've kind of already looked at and done. So you're going through those steps and, and follow the, the previous examples that I gave you. Um, in, in other assignments to fulfill that. Um, the assignment guide does a really good job of showing you this already. So let me open up the assignment guide. Go up to the assignment guide and word study. See how that's already in the assignment guide, step five. Um, and that says page one, but it's not page one. Let's see if I can find word studies in here. That would be embarrassing if we didn't include that somehow, but it says it's in here, so it should be in here. And see, we did the narrative analysis, poetic analysis, word studies, there we go. So here's this whole thing on the assignment guide. Uh, if you need to know more specifically or need a refresher on how to do that, you have all of this stuff right here for you. And it gives a little bit more detail than what's on the the worksheet. So the worksheet has most of what you need, um, right? That's the worksheet, all right? But the assignment guide has, you know, more of more of an example for you. So you're fulfilling this, you literally just fill it in um, on this page. So you would fill the stuff in here, uh, you fill it in there and so forth. And I'm trying to remember, did this get assigned last week? I feel like it might have been, but I can't remember. Um, but that's, that's due this week. So make sure you do ISA number eight and ISA number six, um, this week, and you will be good to go. The assignment guide is there to help you with specifically doing a Greek word study. Um, so you know exactly what to do. And, um, if you have any questions, let me know. But I think at this point we have, we've given you ample things. And if I keep talking, I'm just going to confuse you more than, than uh, you already are. So um, again, that's that's the two assignments for this week. There is no discussion board this week. It's just these two assignments. So um, the comparison of translations, you should be pretty well versed how to do that this week. The list of verses with comment, look at each occurrence of the word you're studying and answer the following questions. So there's going to be multiple occurrences of this word um, in the New Testament. You need to answer these questions for each one okay um, so notice that uh, each of the uses of the english word corresponds to a greek word you're going to find the strong's number and then you're going to answer each of these four questions for each um, use of the the greek word so you should be literally copying these things six these these questions should be copied six times under or sorry each yeah six times because it's we're it's we told you six right it's it's, uh, maybe I'm just making that up. Sorry, guys, it's been a long day. So however many usages there are, I thought there were six, but I'm not, <laughs> now you don't know. Um, if there were six usages of the word, you would copy these four things six different times for each word until, um, uh, until you've answered these for each usage. Then the categories, um, you, you're going to make categories, essentially. It could be more than two. It could only be two, but at least two categories. Um, and you're going to name the category, describe the category, and then tell what verses that is. And then finally, you're going to use step four, use Greek sources in a theological dictionary um, to, to answer the, the, the fourth element, um, which is pretty self-explanatory. Just go through the steps. You look up the word in a concordance and, and, uh, and answer it based on what you're finding there. So be very detailed. Go with, with showing me all your notes and things rather than not. 